restored access to the tree of life that has been lost in the fall. All right, thank you, Nancy, for reading that. Now let's go to our devotional reading, which comes from Psalm 46, 1 through 7. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. God, Jacob, is our refuge. All right, thank you, Lord, for reading that. Now, let's stand and read our key verse. Our key verse will come from Revelation 22 and 1. He showed me the pure river of water of life, clear as a crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. Revelation 22, 1. Once again, I'm going to turn our lesson over to our teacher, Dick Sam Nicholson. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's a blessing to see everyone here this morning. Again, thanks for being here. Another great lesson. Thank our superintendent, our pastor, and all of you all for being present this morning. No better refreshment. Uh, it's a great lesson. Let's conclude with our uh, study and um, believe of Revelation 22. It uh, talks about... <clears throat> The river that John saw. And before we get in there, I just thought, you know, if anybody has spent much time around a river, you know, just when you think about a river, you go there and you see most of everything around a river, you look nervous, you know, because of that supply that flows through the banks. Amen. of the river. You know, and then in uh, the Bible speaks a lot the pure river of water of life through the Old Testament. Prophet used it as a picture of the river as a powerful expression of richness and peace. Okay? In Isaiah 40 and 18 he said, Oh, that thou had hearkened to my commandments, then had thy peace been as a river and thy righteousness as a wave of the sea. Now that represents, that points to something very important. And then y'all, we pray that you listen to Lana when she read that, that Psalm 46 and 4. So there's a river the stream where I shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. After we have struggled through this life and endure, we all have a mind or hope, I would say, to, to venture, to go to a very peaceful place. Last week, week before that, we talked about this place being a place where where sin will not dwell. All the things that we face on earth will not be there. And, I, and you can almost feel excited that one day, we don't know what day, but one day we pray that we'll be there. Amen. And that we said the Bible said the former thing shall not be remembered or they will not come to mind. Now that, that's, that's good right there. Okay, uh, we're going to ask someone if you would to uh, read for us in your book the first paragraph and it is uh, a new existence. He tells us that the city has no need for the light of the sun because it is illuminated by the light of God's glory. And the remaining people of the earth will walk by his light and enjoy the unrestricted access to his presence through eternity. 
This initial verse of chapter 22 are John's descriptions of the bless blessings awaited those who dwell with God. From his description, the interior of the city was like the Garden of Eden. John, sh John was shown the river of the water of life, following from God's throne in the middle of the city, main street. Verses 1, 1 and 2a. This river is reminiscent of Eden's river, and it's a map. Imagery of Ezekiel's Ezekiel saw a pure fire from the temple, but this is one source is God and the land. Christ, the water of life. Here and now we experience temporary refreshment in life, but heaven's will be the constant, accessible stream of blessing and refreshment for God. Amen. Thank you, Zion. Thank you. We'll very beautifully read. Now, a new refreshment. You know, this is not the refreshment that we look for after uh, we've been engaged in something. You know, well, they got freshmen in the back. That's food. <laughs> this is a refreshment for the body, the soul, that 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 person to refresh from a, a, a new, refreshing place, okay? Now, when it talks about unending blessing, we're gonna ask someone to read verses one and two, then I'm gonna come back and we're gonna get into this lesson. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, crystal as clear, Sitting out the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Okay, thank you, Nikki. Now, when we focus on unending blessing, this river as John saw him. and it said that John was like last week I said in the past that John was in the place but the spirit angel had given him a vision of what this holy city this new Jerusalem was going to look like and then think about it that when when John gets back from the Isle of Patmos think of the the this joy the motivation that he would have to go back and to tell the people of God what is awaiting them if we only believe. You can have a passion, you know, when you know something and, and you, you're so excited about it, you want to share other people, share with other people, you have a passion that you want them to really grasp what you're saying. So John had this passion called he saw it and he wanted to, to uh, tell them what it was. Now, it said his angelic guide showed him a crystal clear river of the water of life flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. New Jerusalem had been styled as a New Eden, intended paradise of humankind before the fall, the fall of man. Okay? Each of these river sources is God's present, symbolizing the blessing of eternal life in the, both the Old and New Testament. Water is a beautiful metaphor of salvation and the Holy Spirit. Refreshment, John showed us here that God's people enjoy a continuous stream of blessing and spiritual refreshment emulating from his glorious present. Okay? Now, when I was reading that, in verse 1, he said, and he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and the Lamb. Mm -hmm. That pure river of water and crystal clear, it showed pure without contamination, and it also showed the abundance 
And then in the midst of the street of it and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare 12 manners of fruit and yield her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of a nation. Now in Genesis 3, 22 through 24, it starts with a tree and then it ends with a tree. In Genesis 2 and, 20, and 2 and 9, it said, And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is ple pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. When I, I got stuck on that for a moment when I read that. Now in this, in Genesis, I'm going to want to tie it together. In Genesis, it said, every tree that is present in the sight to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So now there are not just the tree of life, but now in the beginning, God gave us all that we need for food. And then the tree of life, that what we're going to be restored to if we accept it. Mm -hmm. And then the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Mm -hmm. That was something that that tree of knowledge of good and evil would bring us back. What I'm, I'm feeling is that it brings us back to a sense of obedience. Okay. Now he told me that every tree mm -hmm. in the garden you can freely eat for, from. But that one that he told them not to was the one they messed with. Amen. Okay? So it is in our lives today. We still are faced with things and we have to be obedient because if we ever intend to enter into that new Jerusalem and to a place of refreshment, it's going to take some obedience and sacrifice. Okay? And then when it talks about the water. I, I went back and, and I want to share something with you. Uh, in John, the fourth chapter, John 4 and 10, we're going to go back to Jesus talking to the woman at the well. Okay? In John 4 and 10, Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest, get this, the gift of God. What is the gift of God? Eternal life. The way you sin is there, but the gift of God is eternal life. So he tells her, Jesus answered said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God, eternal life, and who it is that said to thee, Give me a drink, thou would have asked of him, and he would have given thee, what? Living water. Okay? And then verse 13, Jesus said to her, John 4 and 13, Jesus answered said unto her, Whosoever drink of this water shall thirst again. See, this Jesus was at offering this woman's salvation. Okay? She was thinking about the water. She said, Well, now you, 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 you don't have nothing to draw this water with. Jesus was talking about the water she was in, and she asked, Are oh, you greater than our father Jacob? Okay? Jesus was at, at, uh, offering her eternal life. Then in 14, and then we're going to go back. John 4 and 14. But whosoever shall drink of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him springing up, a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Okay? Now, when we think about it, we have all been offered that, that gift. We've all been offered that gift of eternal life and Satan is so busy, got us focusing on other things that if we're not mindful and careful, we will not be there to walk this city where the tree of life that, like I said, it started with a tree, it ended with a tree. So now God is going to give that opportunity for all of us to enter to a new Jerusalem. Where none of the things that we, we, we struggle with in life are going to be there 
Everything that we, we hope for will be there and, and, and the supply and abundance will, will not end. Okay? It said God prohibited Adam and Eve from eating from the tree of life in the Garden of Eden. John wrote that the redeemed will also have access to the tree of life in the new Jerusalem. The absence of all sin negates this ban in, in the eternal home of the redeemed. John observed that the tree grows on each side of the river, producing 12 fruit crops each month and bearing leaves that are for the uh, nation's healing. The absence of evil and anything that causes sickness and disease eliminates spiritual and physical maladies requiring healing. Now, when you talk about good for the healing of the nation, they say, why do the nation need healing? Well, it said this healing here is translated as life giving. Okay? Not healing from your sickness or your wound, but life giving. You know when everything seems to be going well, you know, and, and, and life just seems to be good and everything is, is flowing and the abundance of that. Don't you feel like you, you, you don't have no worries? Mm -hmm. You feel like you got no worry when everything is just going well and, and being refreshed and, fit and, and, and healed? That's the abundance that this river that flow is going to give to us. And the good thing about it, there won't be no worries. Because he said the former thing won't even come to mind, mm. will not be remembered, and they will no longer come to mind. Mm. Okay? Now, let's go with verses 3 through 5. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in him, and his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there. And they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Okay, thank you, Naisha. Okay, someone want to read that first paragraph from your book? Life in God's presence will vastly differ from what we currently experience from John's recorded observations. According to his description, life then will be one of perpetual blessing. He also notices another dramatic change. There is no longer any curse because sin, illness, and death are gone. Adam's and Eve's sin barred them, barred them from the tree of life and caused their subsequent push out of the Garden of Eden. The effects of their sin extended beyond them and, then, and cursed the whole of creation. In the New Jerusalem, the first Eden's counterpart of creation's curse is permanently removed and nothing accursed will be in God's presence. Because nothing in Christ will be there, the redeemed will enjoy the intimate fellowship with God and the Lamb. The saved will also experience the privilege of serving and worshiping Him, worshiping Him continually and joyfully. Heaven should not be considered a place of everlasting rest devoid of any responsibilities. Glorifying Him is a privilege accompanied by the dual responsibility of, of adoration and service. What believers' service or ministry will be is not detailed, but reigning requires more than I am sitting if we reign with him. Additional privileges afforded God's people are seeing him face to face and being eternally identified as his unique personal possessions. The redeemed of the ages will realize the fruition of the longing to look upon his face. The saints will see and know him as he is. Thank you, Lana. Thank you. She's mentioned so many things that won't be there. A new existence. The old, the former things will be passed away. It said from John's description of the blessing awaiting the redeemed, the redeem of the people that have been redeemed out of sin, we conclude that life for New Jerusalem inhabitants will be radically different from life now. There will, they will enjoy special privilege because there will no longer be any curse to produce sin, illness, and death. Mm -hmm. The fall will negatively impact humanity's relationship with God and his purpose for creation. 
when we think about God's purpose for creation, you think about we going back to the Garden of Eden and everything that God wanted for man was there. Everything was plenteous, that was river flowing, that supplied in abundance, and everything was perfect until. Mm. Okay? It was perfect until. You know, in Genesis, it said he made Adam and Eve, and they were just going about living and doing what God had put them there to do. Everything was fine until. Mm. When sin came in, everything got messed up. Adam and Eve became aware of their sin. But in this new Jerusalem, the former thing will not come to mind. I can't go back and talk to nobody about what they used to do because I don't even remember. I don't remember what I used to do. So there is no place for sin. So now God restores us back to this perfect place. No sin, no death, nothing that tempt us would be there. See now, in that perfect place that Adam and Eve had in the beginning, it was perfect until <laughs> sin came in. Yeah. And I tell people all the time, Satan used the same tactic today as he did then. Mm -hmm. When he asked, you know, God gave Adam the command, Satan came into God and confused him about what God really said. Oh, that ain't really what he said. He, he changed it up a little bit. And we're, we need to be mindful today that we read God's word because if we're not reading God's word for ourselves, we get confused about what God said and we begin to trail after other things. And then all of that comes in and then temptation came in and that caused the fall of man from the God. But now, the Bible said that when we overcome, you know last week we were talking about being overcome? When we be an overcomer, of, of the sin and the temptation of this world will be restored back to and be part of that new Jerusalem where the thing that caused us to fall in this life will not be there. There will be no more sin to, to uh, temptation or anything like that. He said and, in verse 3, and there shall be no more curse. They were cursed and put out of the Garden of Eden, right? Okay? But the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their forehead. In other words, then we know that we belong to God. Sometimes today we are people not sure. They can go to church and really not know if they saved or not. Well, they go and with it. I don't, I don't know. Can you know? How do you know? Well, I go to church. Going to church don't, don't save you. It is that personal, intimate relationship with God redeeming you back as your Lord and Savior that know without a shadow of a doubt that you are saved. Going to church, being on the church road, it don't do it, it, don't do it for you. Okay? He said, now and then, oh, just a minute. He said, and, and we shall see his face, and his name shall be in their forehead. Mm -hmm. In 1 John 3 and 2, he said, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doeth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when, when he shall appear, okay, when he shall appear, we will, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. When we get there, we will know him. We will see his face now on this side. We just see his face. We feel his presence through the Holy Spirit. But then we'll see God for what, who God is and all that God has put forth to redeem us back to him. And now in, in verse 5, it says, And there shall be no night there. And they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. They shall reign forever and ever. Now, the beauty 
of being in this glorious New Jerusalem is God is going to be our all and all and our supply. Amen. And you know what? It's not just when we get there. God has gave, given us a way now. Amen. Remember Jesus said, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. He said, I'm going to send the comforter. And the comforter is present. But what is the problem is not that God has failed in doing. We have failed in our response to what God has done. Amen. We, we know. And we got to be obedient to his word. Amen. Because when he has laid out the road map, never have we ever been without God leadership. He was in, the, in the olden days, the Bible said that he had spoken to us through the prophet. And then when Jesus came, Jesus came and he taught and he done all this. Before he went away, he left the comforter. Now we know that. So when we, we have these choices in life to make, we know on this side and we know on that side. Amen. It is still enough to know what's right and what's wrong. And, and get this. It's not me looking, well, my brother did, I can do it too. No, no. We as individuals have choices. Amen. We can't pattern out of life after nobody Amen. but Jesus. Amen. Nobody but Jesus. And we, I, we want to make sure we understand that. Nobody but Jesus. Okay? Now, in verse 6, it says, He said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophet sent his angels to show unto his servant the thing that must shortly come. Now, the angel explained that the prophet's word are trustworthy and true because they are God's word. God spoke through his prophet informing them about everything and that nothing was out of his sovereign control. God has always laid the foundation ever since sin had called man to fall. God has been trying to redeem us back to God. And, and you know what? To be redeemed back to God is going to take a life here that's patterned after Jesus. Okay? Patterned after Jesus. Why do you think, as I told you the other week, why do you think when Jesus, uh, uh, after the resurrection... Jesus got up and he showed himself to the prophet, to the to, to the apostles and to other people. And the Bible said at five five hundred souls at one time. Nobody else. Peter didn't get up. Okay? David didn't get up. Abraham didn't get up. But Jesus got up. So we know. The Bible said if we die with him, we will reign with him. In other words, we need to, when we're going to leave here, but when we leave here, we ought to know that we are, belongs to him. So just as he got up, we'll get to get up and reign with him, as it said, forever. It made no, no stickler, no, no doubt about it. He said now, and, it, and his servant, unto his servant, the thing which must shortly be done. And this is the one. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keep the saying of the prophet of this book. When he said, now behold, I come quickly. Mm -hmm. That ought to put us all on notice. That we can't put off the day for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I quickly might, quickly might be the day. Okay? Oh, I got time. I got plenty of time. No, you don't. Nobody knows. Nobody know. So in other words, he said, behold, I come quickly. In other words, don't put off getting that relationship with God today. Mm -hmm. But you know, so, well, I, I might wait till next week or, or next Sunday, but for some people, next Sunday don't come. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but I'm gonna, I can imagine that somebody had plans for the day. But today for them, never did come. Mm -hmm. He said, behold, I come quickly. 
And blessed is he that keep the saying and the prophet of this book. What is the saying and the prophet in God's word, everything that God uh, uh, ordained is in there, written by the hand of man, and I'll be all oh, man written that book, yeah. But they forget to say by the inspiration of God. Okay? But you know what? I'm getting ready to sit down and let the pastor come. It's gonna, I, I want to be there. Because it's going to be so good. Now, you can you can go to these rivers, they nurse the things around them, but they're not pure. Amen. They're not pure. But in that land, it's at a pure river, crystal as clear. And on either side of the street, a tree, they're good for the healing of the nation. I don't know about y'all, but, but me. But me. There, there's some healing I need. Yes. You know what? And, 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 and I could do things here. It don't. It don't heal. It may satisfy temporary. It don't heal. But those things we could be good one moment and down the next. We could be inspired one moment and down the next. But over there, all the things that cause us to to cry and the pain and the hurt and get discouraged won't be there. Like I said all the time, we make appointments and preparation for everything. You know, I, I, I had a dentist appointment a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. They decided to go get the teeth clean. When I got there, they were closed. Okay? I got a in this. So I made that appointment and I got discouraged because they were closed. But now, making that appointment to live with him in a new Jerusalem, a place where everything's going to be beautiful, everything's going to be perfect, and when I get there, get what? I won't be disappointed. Mm -hmm. That's important. That's important for all of us. And you talk about a new refreshment. Now, when we talk about a friend, man, like I say, well, now, when I'm hungry, you know, they say, got refreshment in the back, I'm going back and get me something. But this is refreshment for the body, for the soul, for the mind. And it's going to be there. Oh, yeah. And when we look at what John saw, I can imagine that John was excited. I'm going to return back there one day. You know what? And but to get there, we got to have a life that led by God, and we are already should already know that we belong to Him. Oh, yeah. Amen. Finally, He said, "A day as we know it is a God in a thousand years." As Second Peter three and eight. Believer must live in a state of readiness Amen. and expectancy. That the Lord could appear suddenly at any time. Amen. And he said, behold, I come quickly. He said, come as a thief in the night. And he tells us that when he come back, and he's coming back, a lot of people say, I've been here then all my life. Mm -hmm. They say it, but they forget one thing. A day with the Lord is a thousand years. God, we count time. God is going to count time. Mm. We can't always, it's been a long time. We've been saying that. And I heard so many people left here since they've been saying that. But a day with the Lord is a thousand years. We ought to live a life of readiness and expect to did not go back. That's why it's so important that we should not let the sun go down on our wrath. I told somebody the other day at work, I said, you know, a lot of times people look at the fact that they've been living a long time. I said, God is merciful. Mm -hmm. By God being merciful, a lot of times we hear because God is giving us time to fix things. Not because we're so good. Amen. Just because he's merciful. Because if we don't fix them things down here, think we're going to get a chance to fix them up there? No, no. No. Mm -hmm. You didn't fix the thing down there. Amen. We're going to ask Pastor to come out. Amen. Uh, I know we've been on this lesson for the last three or four weeks. And it's, it's, it's a continuation and look like we end up at the last book and the last chapter of the Bible. Uh, now, we know what it talks about the day of the river. He wants to see his church ministering, not acting up to what the word said. A lot of people can quote scripture. But well, you are living that. That's what God loves. Amen. And 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 
and it hits all of us because all of us can do better than what we do. Especially to your fellow man, woman. Amen. You know what I'm talking about? See, we exercise what we know on other folks. But this thing got to hit us first. Amen. And when you hit you first, you ought to be humble enough mm -hmm. to ask God to give you strength, mm -hmm. to give you power mm -hmm. that you might. Because you can't do it on your own. To stand, to witness, to testify. All that include God is in us. Mm -hmm. And he said that's a pressure cargo that lies in our body. Mm -hmm. So you got to be careful on how you do. If you just tell the truth, and you can't do it, but tell the truth what has been read. And if you read a little further and say, in the body, add I'll subtract. That's right. All right. He'll do that to you. Mm -hmm. He'll do that to me. Amen. So you tell it like it is. Whoever hit, we know what we doing. Amen. Amen. They ain't know. They know. We we know. We know. Amen. So we ain't coming here for no battleground. Amen. We coming here to learn, and hopefully one day we'll get burnt with the word. Because God don't see us as we are. He sees us what we could be if we surrender. Amen. Not to no leadership of one another. You got to surrender to God. And when that word is not being uh, uh, spread or uh, spoken in the leadership department, then if, if, if you don't line up with the word of God, then something wrong. Yes, it is. And that's when you come together and say, now, nah, we want to hear what the word, we won't hear what no tabloid or something, the news. We want to stick with the word. Because people want to be selfish with their religion, mm -hmm. and it's not selfish. God just wants us to know. Amen. That's right. And all of us at different levels. Brother Sam, and you know, and some of the others out there know that God knows where each one of us are yes, he does. in Him. Yes. Yes. And, and, and here what I love, the strong, those who live, yeah. need to bear the farming of the weak. Mm -hmm. But what you talking about? Well, help them that weaker or lower than you. Embrace them. Yes. Don't tell them so much of what your thing. Tell them the word of God. Amen. That's it. And that's how you get fruit Amen. in your past. Because mm -hmm. he coming back. Yes, he is. Oh, yes, he coming back. Yes, he and he don't care what kind of title you got. Amen. How long you going to read the Bible Amen. back and forth. Or how many uh, folks told you you don't feed and and all this mission work we done without the permissive work in us. Yeah. Right. That's what we're going to tell the story. Yes, it is. And the only thing he's saying, it behooves us. That's to get it right, church. Yeah. Because if your testimony can't reach nobody, look back, oh, why? <laughs> because the way you act and present yourself, hey, that's natural because that's Satan way. Amen. But you don't have to remain that way. That's right. You can change. Mm -hmm. You can be a new. That's what we're talking about. This wall. Mm -hmm. And the only person we got to go to, we ain't got to go to know who's who, Amen. who we know in high authority. Well, I know this celebrity and all this. You ain't got to do it. Go down on your. You ain't really ain't got to go down. Just talk to him. Yeah. And he know all about you. Oh, yes. And that's and this repent and, and watch God change things. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we got plenty of work to do, mm -hmm. not for no church work, but ministry. Amen. Ministry. That's what it's about. And guess what? Start at home. Amen. Start in your neighborhood. Amen. Every day that you get up, 
You are the share of the word of God. Mm -hmm. Let's stand for our closing prayer. Can God accept the truth of your word that assures complete satisfaction in you and New Jerusalem? We offer the praise of our lips and holy lives as our expressions of gratitude. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.